Greetings, Game Cola Faithful, and welcome back to more Ghost Trick Phantom Detective HD. I just can't get the images I saw at the police headquarters out of my head. The person who shot me tonight is the last person in the world I want to believe did it. Now I'm here at the place she and I agreed to meet, the restaurant the police were staking out as Point X. But when I got here, I found the place in ruins. Whoa, what in the world happened here? Oh, the heavens, what do I do? If I had known something like this would happen, I would have paid the poor child more. I would have cooked more chicken for her. I would have sung to her as much as she would liked until she'd had her fill. Uh, actually, about the singing, she did tell me she'd had her fill a time or two. The chef seems to be in quite a panic. Anyway, at least it doesn't look like the waitress is dead. Well, that guy's dead. We can go to his hat. That probably isn't going to do us much good. Let's roll this tire. According to that police radio conversation I heard, Lynn should be here. But I don't see her anywhere. It seems like bad luck has it in for that redhead. So I was half expecting to see her in trouble again. I spotted the corpse of the van driver. Uh-oh. Look at me! I'm dead! What took you so long? <sighs> well, that's one way to greet a guy. What happened here? Hey, how should I know? I'm the victim! Is it just my imagination, or is she getting more and more brazen every time she dies? Oh, that's because I'm a detective have to be tough, you know? Well, and how did it go? Did you check out tomorrow's work schedule for Prisoner D99? Yeah, just like I promised. Actually, I have a few things I want to ask you about, too. Sure, we agreed to use each other after all, right? Okay, let's swap info then. Well, might as well uh, answer your question first. Just like you said, each prisoner had a little blackboard in his cell. But the thing is, there wasn't anything written on Prisoner D-99's blackboard. It was blank. What? I guess maybe it means his schedule for tomorrow hasn't been decided yet? Blank. Blank? No! Huh? I didn't think she'd lose it over a blank blackboard. How come you're so upset about an undecided work schedule? I get the feeling that... Back when I was alive, I never had much of a schedule to worry about myself. Do you know what it means when a prisoner doesn't have a schedule for the next day? Huh? It means something? It doesn't mean he doesn't have work to do. It's more like he can't work. And that's because he's going to be executed. Executed? Do you know what Prisoner D-99's crime was? I think so. They said something about him as him murdering his wife right in front of a family member. That's what they say, but it's not true. He would never. Detective Jowd would never do anything like that. And the death penalty hasn't been enforced in this country for a very long time. Not for decades. Even if the prisoner wants it, like in this case. The prisoner wants it. There's definitely something else going on with this case. I just know it. And I have to find out what. And if his work schedule is blank for tomorrow, I have to do it right now. So this prisoner D-99, Detective Jowd, he must be connected to me in some way, too. After all, he obviously knows me. On my way here, I stopped by the chief of police's office. 
Oh, it was just on your way, was it? And while I was there, I saw who did it. I saw my murderer. You saw him? Where? How? Not him. Her. There was a security camera set up there at the junkyard where I got shot. The security tape showed the person who shot me. It was you. No way. You're kidding, right? What do you have to say for yourself, detective? It wasn't me. I didn't shoot you. If I recall, this is what you said about who shot me. My memory just isn't clear on that part. So how can you say for sure that it wasn't you? Because I told you before. You were supposed to give me some information. Information, huh? Maybe that information was the reason you shot me. What? What do you mean? You said you had information on the case I'm looking into. So I would hardly shoot you before I even heard that information, right? I agree. That wouldn't make sense. If it was before. Huh? But what if it was after you'd already gotten the information from me? I definitely told you something then. And whatever it was, it really shocked you. What did I tell you? I don't remember. I don't know. You've got to believe me. After you saved me, I thought I got all of my memories back. But maybe I really didn't. You told me something? I can't remember that part at all. You got the information you wanted from me, and then you shot me. Isn't that what happened? No, no, I didn't shoot you. Please tell me, what did you tell me that time? What did I learn from you? Unfortunately, I just don't know. And man, this music is great. The police were staking this restaurant out tonight. They called it Point X. Point X, huh? That's a good name for this place. That white-suited inspector was surprised to find out you just casually waltzed in here. Inspector Cabanella? What in the world made you pick this place anyway? I guess I'd have to say, because of you. Me, huh? Oh, this is the paper we had on us. Do you remember that note I found? Yeah, I remember. That note I didn't get a chance to read. It had a place and a time written on it. The chicken kitchen, 10 o'clock. In other words, I was supposed to meet somebody here tonight. Yup, apparently so. I just had to get that information you were going to give me. That's why I came here. It was the only lead I had left. And this here is point X. So that must mean the mark the police were waiting for was me. <sighs> so what are you going to do now? I mean, you fulfilled your goal, right? You found out who shot you. <sighs> are you going to get revenge? That would be easy enough to do. All you have to do is not save me. Is this the ending I was hoping for? Had I unraveled all the mysteries of me? What am I going to do now? I'm going to save you, that's what. You are? I want to know everything. Who I was, why I was killed, and I'd like to know who those guys are too. I want answers, and I'm gonna find them. But to do that, I'm gonna need your help. Okay. I won't say thank you. Not yet. And I won't say I'm sorry, either. But I'll help see to it that you get your answers. Good. Now, I think it's time to go back to the past. I can't leave you lying flattened under a huge chunk of chicken forever, after all. Uh, let's do this.
back in time. The note said, the chicken kitchen, 10 o'clock. I wonder who that pointy-haired man was gonna meet here. What's this? Here you go! Well, if you two aren't suspicious characters, I don't know who is. Where's my chicken? Can I eat that thing? Of course. You're just going bigger and better with each new death, aren't you? Leave me alone. Can I help if it, can I help it if I got tired of dying the usual ways? Ah, but I'll say this, it was a death any detective could be proud of. Huh? What makes you say that? The way you save somebody else before dying yourself. Oh, that waitress, the one with the chicken on her head? Next time you put a chicken on your head, you should try one about the size of the waitresses. I'll make a note of that for next time. <laughs> so I love this banter. But anyway, if you hadn't tried to save that waitress, you'd still be alive. I couldn't help it. You know, the detective thing and all. I wasn't able to save that poor van driver, though. At that speed, he must have died instantly. Well, we can't let a heroic detective like you stay dead. The root of this whole disaster is clear. The only question is, how do I stop it? Okay, let's get started. I think it would be easiest if I could travel back and resurrect the van driver. <laughs> if you're gonna call me anything, at least try to make it my name, Sissel. Sorry about that. I'm really bad with names. Me too. The future of this lady's career as a detective looks pretty bleak. All right. Can't make it there. Menu board. Aha, let's ring the bell. You rang? Huh? Oh, sorry, I didn't ring the bell. Oh, okay, I get it. This was a little dig, wasn't it? Kind of like, hey, where's my food, right? No, not at all. Besides, I didn't ring it. Oh, okay, that's all right then. But the chef is the one who makes the kitchen. No, no sense in harassing me about it, right? Just keep that in mind, okay? Ah, uh, okay. Odd girl. I agree. Me too. What was that sign? A tempting dessert menu, maybe? It's kind of embarrassing to have somebody watch your every move like this. No, that sign was... Come to think of it, what did that sign say? My memory's a little hazy on that part. In any case, just hanging around here isn't going to fix anything. I'll have to look for a way to get beyond this area. Okay. okay. Time is passing. <laughs> it repeats this. Okay. So what I need to do... Oh. She's just kind of standing here. Hmm. Maybe I need to wait... She's got the chicken there. Uh, I can't hear them. Hey, we can't hear what they're saying. Don't yell at me. Apparently we ghosts can't hear conversations that are too far away. 
we want to hear what they're saying. We'll have to get closer. What? But I want to hear what they're saying. Yes, those two are definitely suspicious. Hmm, I was supposed to meet somebody here at this restaurant tonight. Or maybe it wasn't so much just meat, but more like something else. A deal. I wonder what it's all about. I wish I knew, but those two are definitely worth checking out. Hmm. What's taking my chicken so long? Unfortunately for you, according to what we saw before, the van arrives before your chicken does. Okay. So time is passing. Okay, I can't do anything here. What should I do here? Just a lot of waiting. This might have been the part that I had no idea what to do. Okay. Huh, that waitress isn't coming. Okay. Okay, so she's going in the elevator. She puts the chicken down. Okay, she's not coming. Okay, well, maybe what I need to do is just stick on your note, and then when you come to save her, Oh, hey, here we go, dialogue. He should be here by now. Doesn't he know the first rule of making a deal? Never keep the customer waiting. Be quiet for a minute. There's a bug in this restaurant somewhere. A bug? I don't see any bug. Right there, a ladybug. I just hate little bugs. I don't think there's anything I can do. Yeah, there is there's nothing I can do here. Well, maybe I can ring the bell, I guess. Yeah, time's up. Hmm, we didn't manage to find too many leads. I say we should check out those two upstairs more. Call it a detective's hunch. Maybe you can just call it plain nosiness. Yeah, see, the problem is... There's nothing I can do. I'm just sitting here waiting this whole time. Because I can't get anywhere from here. If I could get anywhere else... Hear what they're saying. Yeah, this was definitely the the thing that I was not able to figure out. This this I remember I, I knew I remembered something that just took me ages and ages when I was playing this. And this is definitely it. Maybe I can ring that bell when she's about to die. Yeah, we should look at them more. But the problem is we we can't hear what they're saying. That's the trouble. And I can't I can't advance time anymore.
call her over, but there's nothing I can do. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to do here. Yeah, they burn a bug. Okay, so she's got that. Yeah, so they, there's a bug. <clears throat> Probably is actually a real bug. I bet you it's a listening device on the chicken. They're trying to, the police are probably trying to spy on these people because there's they know there's a deal going down. So I don't really have any choice but to just sit around and wait. Yeah, there's... I have no idea what to do here, I'll be perfectly honest. I'm gonna have to look this up. I'll be right back. Because I, I think I had to Google this when I was young as well. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do here. Ah, okay. Alright. Yep, that's what I needed to know. I just needed that one little bit of information. I'm supposed to keep ringing the bell over and over. Aha, there we go. Can I examine this? No use, can't read what it says. Oh, hey, now I remember what the sign says. Aha, if you'd like some water, please ring the bell three... Okay. Well, I'm stupid. I should have, I should have checked the sign. I figured that she wasn't going to remember what it said. Oh, well, that's on me. This is why we have guides, because that probably would not have happened for much longer. Figures. Okay, three times. Ah, I see. <laughs> there we go. You want more water? Huh? Oh, sorry, I didn't ring the bell. And what's with the more water bit? Oh, well, come on, this is your third glass. Okay, I get it. This is a little dig. Like, hey, where's my food? Da -da 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 -da. There we go. That's what I need to do. Perfect. It all comes together. Okay, can't get there. This is one big trunk. It seems pretty heavy, too. It's very suspicious and red. Hey, let's see what's in it. Sorry, but that's not possible. It's locked. Darn, I wanted to see what's inside. All right, let's listen to these guys. So what do you think, my dear beauty? You really think we can trust this deal? Who knows? It's not our job to think about that. But those incidents did just happen in this country, just as he predicted. Yes, and they were pretty amusing too, weren't they? That fellow who sang out at National Secrets during a live TV broadcast, and the man who laid siege to the Metro Police Department, taking the top dog hostage. But what if he double crosses us? It wouldn't be pretty. No, no, he needs this deal, too. And we've accepted all his conditions as well. Yes, and thanks to that, we have to be here on this extra little assignment. 
But as long as I'm paired up with you, beauty, I don't mind. How do these two... How do they know about the cases at the special prison? Special prison. The guy who sang national secrets. The man who held siege to the Metro Police. Those cases are classified information. Hmm. I've heard about both of those cases, and recently too. The perpetrators in those cases are being held at a special facility. That's what the special prison is, but it's not known about by the general public. So prisoner D-99, Detective Jowd, is one of those special cases as well? These two are talking about the very same cases I heard about just tonight. That couldn't be just coincidence, could it? Updated the phone book, alright. Hmm. Nice oh, kid. Why don't we move to a different spot? Oh, that's different. What? That table in the back looks good. Now you're talking, beauty, my dear. Just what I've been waiting for. A quiet, secluded spot. Just the two of us. I wouldn't object to that. All of a sudden, I get this feeling somebody is eavesdropping. Oh, my sixth sense is very strong, you know. That's all right, my dear. You don't have to make excuses. Off we go across the bridge of poultry to the land of love. Hmm. But you left the suitcase over here. What just happened? Did she sense we were here? What, with her sixth sense? Ha <laughs> ha! But, you know, I have some pretty amazing powers myself. Yeah, like what? Like, like if there's chicken nearby, I can tell right away. That's called a sense of smell. And it sure didn't help you with that giant chicken that crushed you. But anyway, at least the situation has changed a little bit now. Okay, fate changed. I don't believe in a sixth sense. It's not scientific, says the ghost. <laughs> Come to think of it, we've been left behind, haven't we? It looks that way. Not having legs is even more inconvenient than I thought it would be. But what are we going to do now? They're all the way over there. I'm telling you, we'd better shake a leg or we're going to miss what they're saying. It'd be pretty hard to shake a leg not having legs and all. They're still talking about something. I want to hear! Me too. Alright, well... Can't open this. Aha, he set down his glass. Dispense? So I was wondering, we're not stuck over here by any chance, are we? Uh, we just might be. Okay, well, I have two thoughts. Number one, if we want to go over to where those two are, we have to use this red trunk they forgot somehow. Sounds about right. What's your other thought? It doesn't look like this blue-haired bartender is going to be much help. So I guess we have to find somebody who can help then. Let's ring that bell. You rang? Oh, I get it. You saw that couple over there, and you started to get lonely, right? And so you decided to call me. Aw, that's so sweet. Forgive me, but I didn't ring for anybody. What? Now, could you not stand in my light, please? I can't see my glass properly. I've been working here for two days, and I've been waiting this whole time for you to notice me. Now, would you stop trying to shake me up and just stick to shaking cocktails? Aw, poor thing. He has a surprisingly short career with this place. Hmm, okay. Maybe I need a ring. And then do this. See if that'll catch her attention. Aha, there we go.
Oh, you just broke that glass, just like you did my heart. A broken glass can never be put back the way it was. Just leave it there. You can't just leave it. Somebody might get hurt. Aha. Doesn't this trunk belong to that couple over there? The only things we allow customers to lose here are their cares. Miss, please go and let them know about the trunk if you would be so kind. How gallant of you. I just might fall for you, you know. All right, there we go. Sweet. Odd girl. I agree. Me too. <laughs> oh no, I can't reach the... Oh, I gotta wait for him to put a glass here. Also, in the meantime, let's check that phone book. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to read any of these. Fastidious glass polisher. Oh, I forgot to check the uh, the place names. There we go. To the case. I've been working here for two... Oh, okay. Same thing. This might be my last night working here. It's been fun. Wow. You work here for two days and... <laughs> Alright. I guess she's leaving this place with her surprisingly short career intact. Here we go. Of all the things to forget, it wouldn't have been pretty if I forgot this. Cool, cool. Now we can hear what you said. <laughs> Here we are, finally. I feel kind of bad about eavesdropping, though. Not me. I mean, we just delivered their lost trunk to them, after all. They owe us at least that much. What kind of detective says something like that? All right. Sweet. Now we can listen. Light swing. Okay, here we go. I can't believe I forgot the trunk of all things. With such a small body, you probably only have a small brain to match. Ouch, that hurts, beauty. But that's okay. That's what I love about you. That's what he loves about her? I mean, hey, I don't judge. <laughs> I don't get it either. Now, I don't get it either, but, you know, like I said, don't judge. Now, where were we? Oh, right. Who to invite to the wedding? If we got married, that is, of course. We can talk about that when we're alone. Hmm? But aren't we alone now, beauty? Huh? Do you think she senses our presence again? I spy a ladybug. A ladybug? I just hate little bugs. Uh-oh. Well, fate changed, but... What? After all that trouble, it happened anyway? It looks that way, yes. It's not over yet, though. It's not? What are you talking about? You're not dead yet. No, but I'm going to be in just a few seconds. But before that happens, maybe there's something we can do from here. Okay, I think I've got it. Uh... Come on, yes, okay. Yes, okay. All right, that's what we have to do. We have to go back in time and save him from dying. Hello? Looks like he's unconscious. Excuse me, could you wake up for a second, please? 
Pushy as ever, this detective. One thing I've learned is that the newly dead stay unconscious for a little while at first. Huh? I was like that, and you were like that too. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. Anyway, if we start the flow of time now, you'll die. Yeah, I know. Why don't we try going back even further in time? W what Even further? But how? Simple. We go back four minutes before the death of this poor driver here. You can do that? I never tried it before, so I don't know how it'll go. But if we can erase the driver's death, that should erase your death too. Oh, wow. I can't think of any other way. Let's try it. Time travel section. Ah, yes, one minute earlier. What the? That's Lynn, our rookie detective. What's she doing at Point X? Could it be just a coincidence? And we just got an APB on her a little while ago. Something about an extremely important case's extremely important witness currently extremely on the run. Now what? Should I report this to Inspector Cabanella? told us to stay off the radio unless it was an emergency, but I think I'd better call this in. Poor Lynn. I wonder what she did this time. Inspector Cabanella is pretty protective when it comes to Lynn. He'd want to know. What's the matter? Alright, fine. So I could potentially travel there. This is point X. Idiot. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll go get her. Static is awful. Can't believe I forgot the trunk of all things. Ah, uh, here we go. Heck is this? Debug. Can't hear very well. Ah. Uh, well, that would explain it. Wow, the van driver was a detective. It looks like it. I noticed something, though. That conversation he was listening to just before the crash. I remember hearing it before. You're right. We just heard it a few minutes ago, didn't we? Just after that conversation, the detective suddenly passed out. What happened, I wonder? We already know the answer. We saw what happened at the restaurant. She burned up the ladybug. Sometimes when a high-tech bug like that is destroyed, it emits a loud signal. Loud enough to knock a person out if they were listening to it through headphones. So that's why the detective passed out, huh? Bingo. Now let's stop it from happening. Okay. Hey, this place... This is the place that white-suited inspector phoned tonight. This is the parking lot on the park on the east side, or the parking lot of the park on the east side of town. It's been years. You know this park? Yeah, I used to play here a lot when I was little. But then one day, I swore I'd never set foot in this park ever again. Whoa, those are some really deep, dark feelings there. I wonder what happened. Hold it! Don't give me that a ghost doesn't have a foot to set bit. It's just a figure of speech. What kind of nitpicker do you think I am? Anyway, whatever. Let's get started. Whew, I think this is going to be a long episode. Okay, let's do that. I won't press her about that other thing right now. It doesn't look like the detective is going to come. Might as well turn it off. It's pretty loud.
Ah, okay. Wow, they put out an APB on me. Apparently, they're calling you a fugitive. Uh, you naughty girl, you. <sighs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you upset. A girl's heart is a very delicate thing, you know. This is from the girl a giant chicken couldn't even kill. It did kill me. <laughs> Time is passing. All right. the radio, but I can recline the seat. Hey, there we go. Well, let's see if that does anything. Who is the detective talking to? Don't keep yelling at me about these things. But they might be talking about something ridiculously important. That's true, but still. It might be the person who really shot you. Now you're just throwing things out there. But in any case, it looks like it's too late to get to the phone now. Darn, I think we missed our chance. All right, let's go ahead and restart. Hello, this is James from the future here. Uh, I was instructed to uh, check out this alternate scene, apparently, that plays if you actually let the detective here drive away in his van. Uh, I was specifically told to recline his seat while he's driving, and I, <laughs> I'm, I have a feeling I know what's going to happen, but I'm not positive. So I'm just going to let this whole thing play out here. So we're going to go ahead, let him get in the van. Okay. All right, here we go. He's on the move. There isn't much time left. We have to stop him fast. Otherwise, he's going to crash into the chicken kitchen. Hmm, this is like that game, isn't it? A game of chicken. Hmm. Sorry, but what's a game of chicken? Sorry. I better choose my audience more carefully the next time I tell a joke. Never mind that. We have to do something. Well, what we do is recline the seat. <laughs> the steering wheel came off. Ah! What do you think you're doing? Oh, uh, I just thought I'd better do something. Well, hurry up and put the seat back up. I can't. It's too heavy. All I can do now is hope this guy has strong ab muscles. <laughs> oh, he still crashes anyway. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was... That was funny. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops, that was my bad. I get that you felt like you had to do something, but that? Well, there really isn't much I can do once the van is moving. We should rethink this. Was there any other path before that? Okay, <laughs> that was really funny. I'm glad I did that. That was worth it. Uh. Anyway, back to your regularly scheduled recording. Because I think what we can do is he can throw those in there, I'll flip them up into the front seat, and then he'll grab them when I alert him with the, whatchamacallit. When I, uh, he'll grab them with the binoculars. Alright, he's gonna toss those in there. We'll recline the seat. 
incline it forward and do this. Let's get back on the binoculars. What are these doing here? There we go. Perfect. Now, who are you talking to? What's the matter? Detective Ringe, this is memory. What's the matter? It's not time for your regular report. Listen to this. There's a suspicious couple in the bar upstairs. I'm going to put a ladybug on them. A ladybug? You mean a listening device? Don't do anything to blow our cover. Inspector Cabanella will be furious. But they're doing all kinds of suspicious whispering. We have to find out what they're saying. You can pick up the signal from your van. Check for out their conversation for me, would you? Oh, that's why your career is so short. You're just here to stake this place out. All right, fine. Once you get going on something, I know there's no stopping you. Thanks. Later, then. Hold on. Did you see a customer come in just now? A young woman with red hair and red boots. Oh, yeah, that restless, suspicious chick. Sure. Suspicious. I mean, come on. As soon as she sat down, she ordered three glasses of water in a row. And she spilled the second glass on the table. Okay, fine. Keep your eye on her, too, if you would. You got it. Oh, wow, that waitress was an undercover agent. And she apparently thought you were pretty suspicious, too. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was really thirsty, so, you know. Uh, no, I don't know. Anyway, did you hear what I heard about the listening device? We have to do something about that bug. So should we stay here or follow up on the waitress? I think we should follow up. Let's go there, because if we can stop the bug from being put on the chicken, then he can't get knocked out when it gets burned up, because they'll never discover it in the first place. Or better yet, we could see if we could maybe swap it with Lynn's chicken instead, so that it doesn't get sent up to the couple. Hey, look where we are! The heart of the chicken kitchen, eh? Yup, or as most people say, the kitchen. I hope the key to preventing that accident is here somewhere. Oh, I bet it will be. You know what they say. Where there's smoke and chicken, there's fire. Hmm, now that you mention it, it is pretty smoky in here. Okay, I can dial the telephone and turn this switch on. What's wrong? I can't seem to raise this switch. It won't budge. Yeah, well, not surprising con considering this whole place is sticky with grease. I bet it must be stuck. Yeah, it does feel pretty sticky. But if the switch here were already raised, I bet I could manage to lower it. Scrunch and stretch. Okay, I can rock the kettle. Hey, look what she's doing. Do you think that could be... Yeah, she's probably planting the ladybug. Now that I think about it, it's this waitress's meddling that starts the whole chain of events. The detective wouldn't have gotten his ears blown out and wouldn't have crashed. In other words, we're witnessing it with our own eyes. The cause of huge disaster slowly being planted in a chicken. Hey, I just had a good idea about what to do about the ladybug. No, I was thinking we could get let her get crushed in, under the chicken <laughs> instead of me. I can't tell if you're kidding. At any rate, now we've seen the root cause of the accident. And all we have to do now is think of a way to take care of it. A chef's hat. Pot. Maybe if I do this. Smoky in here. Aha, okay. Turn off. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. 
All right, perfect. I've got it. Swap the chickens. Perfect. There. How about that? The ladybug is still sitting on the table. We did it. <laughs> All right, I'm not even going to try and sing this. heck is this? <laughs> Fate averted. Well, it looks like you've escaped the fate of being hammered by your horrible hen. Yeah, but I still haven't escaped the worst darkness of this terrible night. I... I shot you, didn't I? There must have been some sort of complicated set of circumstances that made you do it. It's never okay to shoot a person, no matter what the circumstances. Hey, shouldn't that be my line? But anyway, you were investigating a case, and I was supposed to give you information on that case. Maybe it's time you told me about it. Tell me about the case you're looking into. Yes, I guess I should. But let's go back to the new present first. Okay, sure. Back in the new present, the delicious aroma of chicken fills the air, but I'm still thinking about Lynn. I wonder if she's still waiting for her chicken to be served. I decided to go see her, see her and ask her the questions that were still consuming me. Okay, I'll have to wait for him to drop his hat down. There we go. And now, we can dial the telephone to the chicken kitchen. Which is funny, because we were just in the kitchen of the chicken kitchen. Now we're in the restaurant of the... never mind. The disastrous accident has been completely erased. Once again, I've saved the red-headed detective from death saved Lynn, the criminal who stole my life. One question in particular hangs heavy on my mind. Why did she shoot me? Until I know the answer, I'll never be satisfied. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lynn's appetite is apparently foremost in her mind. A golden brown chicken sits on the table in front of her. Until she eats the whole thing, she'll probably never be satisfied. She'll probably. Oh, I see. Nice parallel between my dialogue and and the or the dialogue about me and the dialogue about her. I like that. Is Lynn having a serious talk with that detective? Nah, she's just gobbling down chicken. How did the detective know to stake out the restaurant tonight? Better see if I can get some information. But more importantly, I have lots of questions for that lady detective. Oh, I didn't know you were here, Detective Ringe. Come to see me, did you? Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, hi, Memory. Don't mind us. Just pretend we're not here. Why don't you try some chicken while you're here? No, thanks. Just watching Lynn eat is quite enough for me. So, how did, so, how did it turn out with my ladybug? Oh, that listening device? Well, let's see. I thought the gentleman had a very nice singing voice. Sorry, but we're in the middle of an important talk. Could you leave us to it? But you guys are the ones who called me over. Hmm. Okay, so ring it three times to get water. Odd girl. I agree. Me too. <laughs> All right. There we go. Pitcher of water. Over we come. Did you decide what you want? Some chicken or me, after all? We didn't call you. Sorry, but could you give us some privacy? No, stay right there. Huh? 
I'm at the crucial moment with this chicken here. I'll need you to pour me some water if it starts going down wrong. Ling, you don't have to risk your life over chicken, you know. He's right. Look at her attacking that thing. Anyway, I'd better move now while I have the chance. Hmm, that's funny. Even though I just saved that detective, he doesn't have a core. Not like the one Lin has, that or that valiant little doggy missile. I thought the ones I save are supposed to develop a core when they're alive again. I guess I still have things to learn about these powers of the dead. Maybe it's because we he healed him. Uh... All right, well, I'm heading back. Lots of things to do, you know. Uh, maybe it's because we, we revived him inside someone else's death, so only the, the first person gets a core. Yeah, like washing dishes and planting bugs. Someday I'll plant a big one on you, detective. Odd girl. I agree. Me too. Listen, Lynn. You've explained your side, and I understand. But there's an APB out on you. Can't you at least hurry up and get out of here? You know, slip away quietly? No can do. I'm meeting somebody here. Meeting somebody? Oh, yeah, that's right. The little lady, Camilla. But why do you have to meet somebody here? The Special Investigation Unit is watching this restaurant. Now, how can that be a coincidence? I don't know, but it is a coincidence. Hmm. Hey, is it true what they say? That you're still looking into Detective Jowd's case on your own? Hmm. Inspector Cabanella is worried about you, you know? I understand how you feel, but just don't do anything crazy, okay? Hey there, Lynn. So how's that chicken you've been waiting so long for? It's great! But you know, with Detective Ringe, that's his name by the way, sitting right across from me, I mean, he was just dead a few moments ago, right? That's kind of taking the edge off my appetite. He could have fooled me. Oh, brother. But he's a great guy. He understands my situation, he said. He's going to give me a pass just for tonight. Speaking of Detective Ringe, I noticed something strange. He doesn't have a core now. He doesn't? I thought a core was supposed to show up once I saved somebody. Hmm, I wonder if... When you possessed his corpse, he was unconscious, right? Unconscious? Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Just like you, you were unconscious the first time I saved you too. And after I saved you, you didn't have a core either. Oh. So for people who are unconscious when you save them, no core shows up. I think that's probably what it is. You might be right. Oh, excuse me for a moment. Uh, you might be right. Okay, I'll leave Ringe to you then. But I've still got lots of questions for you. Yeah, I thought you would. Let's get started then. What is your connection to Prisoner D-99, Detective Jowd? He seems like more than just a co-worker. Yes, I suppose you have the right to know. Detective Jowd is my hero. Hero, huh? You don't hear that word much anymore. Well, it's an old-fashioned, heroic kind of story. It happened ten years ago. Now just calm down and drop that weapon. Stay back! If you come any closer, I'll shoot her! On that day, ten years ago, I was playing in my favorite park. And then suddenly, somebody grabbed my arm from behind. I was so scared, I thought I was going to die. And then... He appeared, Detective Jowd. And then that really loud sound. I think it was the sound of a gun. I passed out. When I came to... You're all right now. Are you hurt? You saved me, mister? I was just doing my job. The gods. They're the ones who saved you. What's your job, mister? Me? 
I'm a police detective. So that's why you became a detective, huh? That's right. He was my ideal of what a detective was all about. But an ideal detective doesn't shoot and kill his own wife. Exactly. Hmm. <laughs> and that's why I want to prove that he didn't. Alright. Point X. Detective Ringe works for the Special Investigation Unit. He said an important deal is set to go down here tonight at this restaurant. A deal that could affect the future of our nation. A nation isn't something that's easily influenced, though. But that's what he said. Anyway, it's that couple at the table upstairs. I hear they're foreigners. They're waiting for the other party in, the de in this deal to show up now. Those two, huh? They certainly are an odd pair. Is this other party they're waiting for me? It's kind of hard to imagine, isn't it? Nobody really knows any of the details of the deal except for one person. <laughs> Mr. Breezy Dancer in a white suit. They say he's been watching the movements of those two for a long time. I've never seen him work so frantically on an investigation before. Inspector Cabanella, eh? Apparently you're a real favorite of his. A favorite? Yes, well, there's a reason for that. And what's that? Inspector Cabanella and Detective Jowd were good friends. Yeah, I think I remember the prison guard saying something about that. They joined the detective division on the same day. They're two very different types, but they were always in friendly competition to be the best. Detective Jowd was always very particular about thorough investigation of the crime scene. And Inspector Cabanella, well... I guess he just has a natural genius for investigating. Anyway, those two lead the detective division in those two led the detective division in those days. But Inspector Cabanella is different now. He changed a little. He changed. Ever since detect ever since the detective Jowd incident, now he distances himself from field work. And he's starting to focus on nothing but moving up the ladder. Hmm. And so that's how he became the head of the Special Investigation Unit, I take it. Anyway, Inspector Cabanella took me under his wing. Because you were the little girl his good friend had saved, huh? He really looked out for me. He's helping me to study for my detective's exam. Fudging my exam scores for me. Ah, uh, that goes a little beyond the scope of looking out for you. Inspector Cabanella, eh? I wonder what role he plays in everything that's happening tonight. Lastly, it sure is taking Camilla long enough. She should have been here by now. I'm getting really worried. You two are like sisters, aren't you? That's what Camilla said. Yep, that just about sums it up. It doesn't look like being worried affected your appetite much, though. Hey, the bigger the crisis, the more a girl's gotta eat. Hmm. I have to make sure Camilla stays, stays safe, no matter what. Camilla, and that music box, too. Music box. Oh yeah, that wooden box. That box was a present from Detective Jowd. From Detective Jowd? Yes, it was five years ago. That box arrived three days after that murder incident. He must have sent it just before he was arrested. Someday, when the case is over and everything is settled, I want you to give this to a certain person, he said. So what's inside? I don't know. I can't open it. Hmm, that's a shame. Sissel, I... Did I really shoot you? Where did that come from out of the blue? Really, I really don't remember. I tried and tried, but just can't. Now I finally understand how you must feel. How hard it is to have your memory gone, your story erased. But who knows? Knowing the truth might be even harder. I'd rather believe there's hope myself. Mm. That was great. Hmm. Do I have chicken on my face? You're staring. Hmm. I bet you're thinking about how impressed you are with the way I took care of that chicken. Just tell me one thing. 
This case you say you're looking into. Is it Detective Jowd's? Hmm. What if it was? I... I can't keep it from you. It's too cruel. Huh? What are you talking about? I'm sorry, Lynn. It's... It's tonight. Detective Jowd's... You know... It's tonight. His execution. But there's still time. I looked into it, and I found out all the executions in this country are carried out at dawn. That may be the norm, but not this time, I'm afraid. What? The execution is set for 11 p.m. What did you say? It's gonna happen pretty soon. Isn't there anything we can do to stop it? Of course not. It's too late now. Not without a stay of execution from the Justice Minister. Mm. I'm going to go see him then. What? See who? Who else? The Justice Minister! Don't be ridiculous, there's not enough time! I'm going! Sissel! Me? Get to the prison! Stop that execution! Easy enough for you to say. Detective Ringe, I'll be going now. Okay, I'll let you go this time. I'll tell him I was distracted because I was eating chicken. Is there anything else I can do? Could you find Camilla? She's supposed to be on her way here. Oh, your little Camilla? Okay, you got it. I'll look for her. Okay, you know what to do, Sissel. You have to save Detective Jowd. The life of yet another person I'm connected to somehow is about to end tonight. Could it be a coincidence? Or is there something more behind it all? Detective Jowd is destined to be executed tonight. I don't know if that fate is the wrong one for him or the right one, but I've decided to go to the prison anyway. And we'll continue this story in the next episode. See you guys then.